This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. All right, Known Podcast, welcome back. Season 2. So excited. Um, for a brand new year, right? You know, 2023 is here, and I hope you had a great Christmas and a great new year as we celebrate the things. And I'm excited, you know, for for this new year and the opportunities that will come and the, the things that we're going to learn and grow in, you know, as individuals. I'm excited uh, for 2023. I think it's going to be, you know, an amazing year. Um, and, and as a new year comes, I think it always brings an excitement for the future. And you see this all the time, right? People always say, you know, new year, new me, right? You know, I'm going to head into this new year with these new aspirations, these new goals, these new resolutions on kind of who I want to be, who I want to become in uh, this new year. This is what always happens as we enter into a new year. Again, we have these new goals, new aspirations. We often set goals um, as we step into a new year to grow ourselves as much as we can. And, and I think as we enter into new to a new year, there's, there's, there's a very specific like type of of uh, goals or resolutions that we create to have this new year, new me kind of mentality. And I think the most common yearly goals or resolutions that we have um, are to exercise more, right? Maybe you look at, you know, the past year, you're like, shoot, man, I, I did not exercise enough. Maybe you've started to gain some weight and like, you know what, 2023, I'm going to exercise more. Others of us, we want to maybe even eat healthier, right? Maybe we saw how much pizza we scarfed down in 2022, how much McDonald's. We're like, no more. 2023, I'm going to start to eat better. And, you know, some of us, our goals are to lose some weight through exercise, through eating. Others of us, we want to save more money. You know, we want to be able to, you know, invest more of our money into our own future. And so we want to save more and invest more so that way we can have just more stable uh, future. Others of us, we want to spend uh, more time with our friends and family this new year. You know, we're like, you know what, how much time did I spend on the wrong things? How much energy did I invest um, into the wrong things where I neglected sometimes my family or my friends um, on the altar of work or the altar of whatever. And so, you know, that's what some of us like to do. We want to spend more time with our, you know, our, our family and our friends. Other, others of us, we want to spend less time on social media. You know, some of us, 2022, we look back like, man, the amount of memes, the amount of, you know, reels that I saw on social media that mean nothing, that add nothing to my life, that I just wasted my time scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling late into the night. Um, we were like, you know what? I do not want to spend so much time on social media. I don't want to spend so much time on my phone. I actually want to enjoy the moments and enjoy life. And so others of us, we want to, you know, we want to, <coughs> want to maybe reduce our spending, or we want to, you know, reduce our living expenses, or we want to increase our income as we step into this new year. And I think for all, for a lot of us, right, these are some of the goals that we've had year after year after year, where it's like every time January comes, like, I'm going to eat healthier, I'm going to exercise more. And how many of us know we get, you know, a couple weeks into the year, we are like, shoot, I did not uh, live up to these goals or live up to these resolutions. And we haven't even gotten that far into the future. And I think oftentimes when we look at our goals, I think they kind of go into some the you know, main categories. Number one is our our health, right? We want to try and be healthier. We want to take care of our bodies better. We want to take care of our minds better. We want to take of our take care of our souls better. And so we want to make sure we're getting healthy across the board. Others, uh, uh, other ones are you know wealth. We want they all to do with our wealth. We want to make sure that you know we're 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 uh, we're setting ourselves up for a better future. We want to try and increase our income, or we want to you know decrease expense or decrease our spending to make sure. Um, that we're creating better futures when it comes to our wealth. And I think the last area that we like to, you know, uh, set goals or aspirations or resolutions in as you go into to a new year uh, is this area of time, right? We want to, you know, invest our time more effectively. We want to invest our time more efficiently. And so a lot of us, when we do this, they're to do again with our wealth, our, our, our health, our wealth, and our time. But I think how many of us know as we say this resolution, right? No, new year, new me, new year, no me. I think a lot of us, we've come to the realization that oftentimes it's new year, same me, 
right? We come into it as saying, new year, new me, but we get a month in, we're like, man, it's a new year, same me. Nothing changed. You know, as we step into a new year, really nothing changes, right? It, there's an excitement that comes, but nothing changes. It's not like all of a sudden we get into a new year and everything's different. You know, it's just a day. It's just a, it's just a day that goes over uh, to midnight. And so we get to the end of it, we realize, man, new year, same me. Same problems I had in 2022 are still going to exist. I'm not all of a sudden going to just love eating salad over chicken wings. I'm not always going to just enjoy eating a cucumber over potato chips. I'm not all of a sudden going to be able to wake up at 4.30 in the morning to get to the gym uh, before I go to work. I'm not all of a sudden going to enjoy going for walks. I'm not all of a sudden going to enjoy going for runs. Um, if we want to actually create space to become new, there's a lot of things that can, that need to happen. And, and we're, we're never going to just all of a sudden be new without actually putting in the work and actually disciplining ourselves. And I truly believe, I truly believe this, that people can change. And I think that we all, uh, that we can all learn to become more disciplined. I believe that we can truly all become more determined to actually set out to see the change, not just set a resolution, but actually to create habits and actually create change in our lives to become better people. I truly believe that people can change. And I think that all of us, as we go into a new year, I think all of us have really high expectations or really high aspirations, really high vision for what we want to see this year look like. But the difference between vision, be between your vision and where you are is how hard you're willing to work and how disciplined and determined you are to actually get there. Right, So when we look at 2023, how are we going to get to the place that we can see in our minds? How can we get our, ourselves to be the healthiest version of ourselves that we see it? How do we actually get to that point? How do we actually get to a point where we actually start to become new, new year, new me, rather than new year, same me? And today I want to give us just two questions that I think will really help us when it comes for reflection uh, to the last year. What reflection on 2022. Um, and I think through this, as we reflect on 2022, I think it's going to help us actually um, prepare for 2023. What can we do to prepare for the future? What can we do now to see, okay, you know, at the end of this year, what do I want to feel what do I what am I going to be proud of what have I what am I going to be excited about as we get to the end of 2023 because each year right 365 days in the grand scheme of things very short we only have 365 opportunities to see our vision become our reality 365 moments to actually put in the work and put in the dedication and be disciplined to actually create what we see in our minds so I have two questions for us that are to reflect on 2022. And number one, the first question that I want you to ask and really reflect on and spend time is, is what are your greatest achievements in 2022? What are the things that you're the most proud of? What are the things in 2022 that you're the most excited about? What are the things that you look at you like, man, man, this is what I accomplished, or these are the things that I saw that 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 were powerful, and you know, this is what I was just so excited about in my own life. And achievements are amazing. I think it's really important for us to realize our achievements, to realize um, the accomplishments that we had over a year, because I think sometimes our achievements get lost in the sea of failure, and so oftentimes, at least for me, when I look back on the year, I always think about all the failures that I had, all the things that I struggled in, all the mistakes that I made, all the things that I didn't accomplish that I set out to accomplish in 2022. But I think it's really important for us to to reflect and say, okay, what did I actually accomplish that I, that, that was amazing? It may have not been part of your plan, right? You know, your 2022 plan, but what did you accomplish or what are you proud of from last year? You know, we always want to, 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 to be looking back and remembering what was good. And I, when I worked in student ministry. You know, we worked for my wife and I seven years um, as youth pastors um, at, at a church. And, and it was an amazing opportunity. But every night, you know, at the end of our gathering, we'd meet Wednesday nights. And at the end of it, we'd, have our, we'd gather, gather our team uh, together and we debrief, you know, our midweek youth gathering, you know, what was good, you know, whatever. Like we'd go through it all. How can we, you know, all this. But we'd always start every single um, every single one of our meetings 
by finding out, you know, what was a win tonight or what was a success tonight? So what are the things tonight that were powerful? And we'd get, you know, we'd get so many different answers, right? You know, anything from like, you know, I had this great conversation with a student. They kind of opened up their, their life to me and I was able to, you know, pray with them or I was able to talk to them or I was able to encourage them or I was able to just to sit with them and, and be there for them and bring comfort to them as they were telling me, you know, their story uh, to, you know, the food that they ate that night or the food that we cooked, you know, that night. And we'd always have a moment to celebrate uh, the things that we're doing well. I think it's really important to realize your strengths. I think it's really important to realize what, you, what, what you've accomplished, what you've done well, because then you can build on what you've done well. Then you can build on, uh, on your strengths. You can build on what you already are doing to go grow exponentially more if you, if you can grow on what you're already good at. And I think this is so important to remember the accomplishments, remember the achievements that you had. That way you can look back and say, okay, this is what I did. This was that I'm proud of. This is what I'm excited about that I did in 2022. And how can I build on this in 2023? You know, 2022 brought a lot of things that were, you know, good, a lot of things that were hard, a lot of things that were challenging. I want to encourage you, really reflect. What are you most proud of in 2022? What what did you do? What did you accomplish? Or in your family, it might just be personally, it might be in your business, it might be in your church, it might be in your family that you accomplished in 2022 that you saw happen that excites you, that you're so, so proud of. I think all of us, we have things that we can look back on and be excited about. You know, for me, uh, there's, there's so many things that I, that I look back on in 2022. You know, I started the year, you know, I was going to the gym very frequently. And so for me, I actually ended up having like some personal records, you know, for, for, for the weight that I was doing and all this stuff. And I was super proud of it because, you know, it was a lot of work to get to that point, the, the, the discipline that I had to actually, you know, go to the gym. I was going like sometimes five times a week. Um, and I was probably the healthiest that I'd ever really been in my life physically, um, you know, over, you know, the first, you know, several months of 2022. So I'm proud of that. I'm excited that I able to, was able to put in the, the dedication, put in the time to, to help myself grow, um, to grow myself, to, 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 to take care of myself as best as I can. So look back, like, what are you proud of in 2022? So that's the first question to ask yourself is what are were your greatest achievements in 2022? Second question is this, and I think this is the so important to ask this question. What are, what are my biggest regrets of 2022? What are your biggest regrets of 2022? And I think for, for all of us, at least for me, I look back on, man, how many moments did I fail as a, as a father? How many moments did I you know, lose my cool? Or how many moments did I, did I fail as a pastor? How many moments did I fail the things that I regret the most? And those are the things that oftentimes stay in the surface of my mind. You know, I think a lot of us, uh, we can learn more from our failure uh, than from our achievements and victories oftentimes. And I think the reason why is because when things are going well, we try to wa- ride the wave of success. or like, okay, this is going well, so just keep doing what we're doing, even though sometimes you don't even know what you're doing because you don't actually take time to reflect on it. And so you're like, yeah, like, like, like this is going well, so we're just going to keep riding the wave of success. We don't ask why things are going well. We're just excited that they are going well. And so, and so this is why I think oftentimes we don't learn from our successes because we don't actually, um, we don't diagnose why. We don't understand the why. We just know it's working, and so we just keep doing it until it doesn't work anymore, and then we try something new. So I think, I think we can learn a lot from failure because failure is when we really have to look ourselves in the eyes. We have to look ourselves in the mirror and say, why did this happen? How did this happen? And what am I going to do about it? Right? When, when we make a mistake, when we have something we regret, when we have a failure uh, that, that, that we didn't expect, it really opens our eyes to why, how, and what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do in the future? When you look back in 2022, I think we all have things that we regret or failures that we had over the year. And, but I truly believe this, that there's power in regret. There's power and regret. In fact, in the beginning of 2022, uh, New York Times bestselling author Daniel Pink released a book called The Power of Regret. And I highly recommend you read this book. I highly recommend you find him talking about this um, because it's so powerful. And it just shows how important regret is. He says that the regret is the second most um, the, 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 the second uh, most uh, emotion that people feel is regret. And it, the first negative emotion that people feel is regret all the time. It's, it's everywhere. People have so many regrets. We're filled with regret. 
over our lifetimes, over our year, whatever, we're filled with regret. But he shares three main thoughts when it comes to regret. He says this, he says, regret makes us better. And then he says, what we regret tells us what we value. And then regret makes us human, right? So, so when we look at regret, regret has the power to make us better. And also regret shows you what you value the most because what you value the most is where your regret will lie in because you didn't do what you wanted to do. And then uh, regret makes us human. We're human beings. Every single human being has regret. Whether you want to admit it or not, we all have regrets in our lives. And so in this book, he shares four uh, types of regret. Number one, he says, is foundational. And what foundational says, it says, if only I had done the work. Foundational regret is, if only I had done the work. If only I had tried harder in high school, I could have gotten into a better university and then gotten a better job and made more money. Right. If only I had spent less going out for fast food and saved more when I was in my 20s or my 30s, then I would be way more financially stable. I regret how much money I wasted on things that had no value. Right. That's a foundation of regret. If only I had done the work. Number two is boldness. And boldness says this, if only I had taken the chance, right? Boldness regret says, if only I had taken the chance, if only I had invested in cryptocurrency before it exploded, right? If only I had started the business when I had a chance, if only I had had the boldness to do it, if only I had, if I hadn't chosen to get involved with those people, if only I had asked her out on that date, if only, and so these are boldness regrets where we didn't have the boldness in the moment to do what we wanted to do. And number three is moral, which is if, which says, if only I had done the right thing, if only I hadn't cheated on my wife, if only I hadn't chosen to, 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 to make these decisions, if only I hadn't cheated my boss, if only I had made the right choice, if only I had done the right thing. And then, and then number four is connection regret. If only I had reached out, if only I had called my grandfather before he had passed away. It was in my mind and I didn't call him. If only I had texted my son after years of broken relationship. If only I had been so invested, if I hadn't been so invested in my work that I neglected my family, if only. And then he goes on to share of these four regrets, what each type of regret reveals to us, right? Because he also says, again, what you regret tells you what you value. So he says that foundational regrets reveal your need for stability. So your life is in chaos and you look back and say, man, if only I had done this, if only I had put in the work here, then I wouldn't be dealing with the instability of my life right now. You know, and boldness regrets reveal the need for growth where we're like, man, we kind of feel stagnant and we're like, no, I, I want to do more. I, I feel like I'm called to more. I feel like there's more inside of me. I feel like I have it, but, but I don't know what to do about that. That's what boldness regret is, is that it reveals your need for growth. Moral regret reveals the need for goodness, that we just want goodness and, and, and how we all really just want goodness in our life. We, 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 we don't want bad. We want good and we want good people and we want to be around great organizations. We want to be in these places. And so our moral regret is like looking at ourselves with shame and saying, man, I regret this because I didn't make the choice that I wanted to make. And then number four, connection regret reveals the need for love. It reveals your need for for love, the time where you, again, if only I had called my grandfather before he passed away, this connection regret, it reveals your need for love. And I want to encourage you, spend some time reflecting on 2022. What is it that you regret the most? What is it in 2022 that you wish you had done or wish you hadn't done, right? You know, maybe you didn't take the chance at a career change and you weren't bold enough to pull the plug and apply for that job that you thought was going to be your dream job. And, you know, this would be a boldness regret. You know, maybe, maybe that's you. Maybe you look back and like, man, all these choices I should have made, but I was too scared in the moment. I didn't have the courage to make the decision. And I feel like if I would have, my life would be so much drastically different now. You know, maybe you lost a big contract at work because you tried to bend the rules to get a better deal. You know, may maybe you made a decision in your, in your marriage um, that, that almost tore apart your relationship and there's some moral regret that has come in. You know, maybe you lost a loved one this year and you wanted to call them, but every time you went to pick up the phone, you got distracted or 
he's like, nah, nah, nah. If they wanted to call, they, you know, they'd call me. And y- you look back and you realize, man, I should have just called them. You know, I should have just made that phone call. And this would be a connection regret, you know, your need for love. Maybe you look back and realize how you neglected to take care of your body in 2022. And a year later, you've gained some weight and, and tasks that used to be easy for you, maybe walking up the stairs or, you know, getting out of your car that used to be easy for you. You look back and my man, I can barely do this anymore. You know, it's things that used to be easy have become so hard and this would be a foundational regret. You know, when you look back at 2022, what do you regret the most? Because what you regret the most will reveal what you value the most. Because when we answer this question, when what do I regret the most in 2022, it will reveal some very interesting and very profound things. You know, for me, when I look back in 2022, I have several regrets, you know, many that I can look back on. And number one would be, you know, when I was, you know, again, like I shared, I was working out four or five times a week, you know, you know, every day, you know, going to the gym and again, the healthiest I'd ever been. Um, but, for, you know, from January to April, you know, the first, you know, four months of the year, a few months of the year, I was working out, you know, very um, steadily, very consistently. I was very disciplined in it. But as soon as I got back from my vacation, which is kind of what I was, you know, getting ready for, as soon as I got back, I stopped going. You know, I got busy. I didn't create time for it. I didn't create space for it. My discipline kind of vanished. And then I kind of went back recently and I'm like, shoot, like, like I've lost it all. You know, I've lost all that. And so I look back and man, like, like if only I'd put in the work then, then I'd be healthier now. If only I had done that, kept it up, even shrunk it down a little bit, but not just gave it up completely. Look, where would I be now compared to where I am actually <laughs> right now? Another one is, I think about how much time I spent on my phone when my daughter was in the room, you know, playing with her toys on the floor. Where I could have been down there with her, playing with her Duplo, playing with her Legos, playing with her babies. And I'm out here on my phone scrolling, watching pointless videos that I'm not even going to remember in the next five minutes. That's a regret I have. Because as, as humans, when it comes to connection, when it comes to love, right, connection regret, you know, every moment is so precious with people. And I'm just starting to realize more and more and more how much time am I wasting my, this precious time I have with my daughter that, we, that you never know when things are going to change. And I'm wasting this time. I look back and it's filled with regret of saying, man, why? Like, why did I waste so much of my time when I could have been invested in relationship with my family and with my daughter? When you look back, what are your biggest regrets in 2022? Because again, it will reveal some very profound and very interesting things. Because once you realize what you regret, you can make a plan for 2023 to ensure that you don't do that same thing again. So that way, when you get the opportunity to start the business, you say yes. So that way, when you get the opportunity where you're stuck in the crossroads of making the right decision or the wrong decision, the, what's good or what's bad, when you come into the, the space of a moral decision, you can choose what's good because you've set yourself up beforehand to say, no, this year I'm dedicated to not have moral regret. I, I'm dedicated to go forward, to learn. I think each regret we learn from, um, we can't run away from our regret because if we run away from our regret, we're never going to face it head on. As you step into 2023, make a plan based off of what you regret in 2022 to create a better 2023. So that way we don't go forward and say, new year, same me. We say, no, no, I'm going forward. New year, new me. I'm a new creation. I'm new. I'm going forward. I'm not going to be the same. I'm not going to make the wrong decisions. I'm not going to do this because I'm setting myself up now, preparing my mind to make that decision better in the moment. You know, don't use a substance to hide your regret. Don't let fear keep you hidden from other people. You know, Daniel Pink, he says this, we think when we disclose our vulnerabilities, because sharing your regret is very vulnerable, right? Because we don't want to share our weakness. We don't want to share our insecurity. We don't want to share the things that we regret the most. Why? Because it reveals a part of our heart that we've been trying to keep hidden for so, 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 so long. So he says, when you, we think when we disclose our vulnerabilities, our mistakes and our weaknesses, people will like us less. That's what we truly believe. We think, no, they won't think I'm strong. They won't think I'm courageous. They think I'm weak. And so we say, no, I can't share my biggest weaknesses. I can't share my regrets because they won't like me. Then he says, they genuinely like you more because they admire our courage. 
They will like you more when you share your regret, when you share your deep insecurities. They'll, they'll trust you more. Why? Because you're being vulnerable and saying, no, I'm not perfect. I'm broken. This is the th- mistakes I made. This is the regrets I have in 2022. But what am I going to learn from these and how am I going to go forward? It might be worth sharing your regrets with someone that you trust. Sharing the what you regret from 2022 and begin to dissect why you regret it and what it reveals about you. So as we look back in 2022, really understand those two things. What am I so proud of? What is it that I did in 2022 that I'm so proud of, so excited about? And then also, when I look back 2022, what do I regret the most? And then don't keep that hidden don't keep that just for you be like oh oh man i regret this share it with somebody that you trust share your biggest regrets why because as we enter into a new year let us learn from our achievements let us learn from our regrets to create a better 2023 to not just have resolutions to say you know this year this is what i want to do no this is who i want to be right this is who i want to be it's so much more important about who we want to be than what we want to do when we realize who we want to be, that's when we're going to understand what we need to do. So you look at your future and you say, you know, I want to be healthier. This is who I want to be. Okay, now that you know who you want to be, now how are you going to get there? How are you going to get to that place where, where you are the healthiest version of yourself, the best version of yourself, the best leader that you can be, the best parent that you can be as you go forward? This comes when we realize our greatest, what we're most proud of because we say, okay, I'm proud of this. How do I build on this? And then we realize our biggest regrets in our life because our biggest regrets in our life reveal what we value the most. When you understand what you regret, you'll begin to understand what you value. And when you start to value it, you see what you value, you can say, okay, I'm going to build on my success and I'm also going to build on my value. And as we build on our success and value, there's going to be a place where they come together and create a beautiful future. We're not just saying, this is what I want to do. We're saying, this is who I want to be in 2023. Understand what you want to achieve in 2023 and realize what you don't want to regret in 2023. So that way when the opportunity comes, you can say, I'm going to go forward either, even though I might be scared, even though, even though I might feel like I'm not disciplined enough, You can do it. Like, I truly, truly believe this. Let's step into 2023 with a game plan to be a victor, not a victim. Let's step into 2023 to not let let our regret hold us captive from 2022, to not let our regret hold us captive, but actually to let our regret be the platform that we build this next year on, that we build the future on. Let regret build a better future for you. There's power in regret. We can all get better. I truly believe this. We can all change. You know, I hear people saying, I'm not disciplined or I'm not this or I'm not that and I'm not this, I'm not that. I'm like, then be it, you know? Like, like you can do it. Like, if I can if I can do it, you can do it. Like, if, if I can, you know, try and get up early and go to the gym, you can do it because I'm not a very disciplined person, but I'm learning and learning and learning how to become more disciplined and it's all about how much work we put into it. So are you willing to put in the work in 2023 to build on your achievements from 2022 and to build on your regrets from 2022 to build something so beautiful so that you can become the person that you want to be, not the person that you wish you were? You can be who you want to be in 2023 if you realize what what your achievements were in 2022 and what your regrets are of 2022. You know, and I believe, you know, that you can do this and I believe that we can do this together. Thank you for joining us today for the Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.